I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a video on NMR. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Orgoman products and the author of the Dot Destroyer book. I want to go over a question with you involving NMR spectroscopy. I've been teaching the NMR course here at Romano Scientific for over 25 years, and most students find the course very challenging. For you, we just got to do a very simple question that's going to be in the multiple choice form. So come around and I'll show you what we got, and let's have a look. What I did here is I'm going to give you two graphs, and I'll label them A and B. And what I have is a C4H8O2 is the molecular formula, and your job is to identify which one would correlate to which structure. Now, I'm going to do this in a non-multiple choice f format. The first thing is I'm going to calculate the degree of unsaturation as I've shown in another video. So that I'm going to expect you to know how to do. I write down the original. You don't count the L's. Underneath it, you write the nearest alkane with the same number of carbons, subtract the difference, and then half it. So that means there's one degree of unsaturation. If there's one degree of unsaturation, it means the compound has a ring or one double bond. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to look at is we go to the graphs, and you can see that all the graphs, A and B, have a triplet, quartet, and a singlet, just that they're not in any, not in the same order. Now, if you go to A, we see the most downfield signal would be around the 3.7, and that would be a singlet, where if you go to this graph, the most downfield singlet would be a quartet. Now, anytime you ever see a triplet quartet on an NMR graph, I want you to always entertain the possibility of an ethyl group. So both of these graphs have triplet quartets. Doesn't matter, they don't have to be next to each other, but I believe that both of them are going to be ethyl groups. Now, if they both contain an ethyl group, and I wrote this down, let's have a look. I can write this as a possible structure, or I could have wrote something like this as a possible structure. Now, this would be a multiple choice format, so it would be a lot easier for you. Now, what I always teach my guys to do is look at the signal that's the most downfield. And I think you can see that this would give the most downfield signal. So that means that I would expect to see a downfield quartet. So I'm going to just write downfield, and that would be a quartet for these H's. Whereas if I go for this one, this is the most downfield. So this one would give a downfield, but a singlet. Well, both of these, as you can see, this would give a, this would give a triplet. This would give the quartet and singlet. Again, triplet, quartet, singlet. But this compound would show a downfield quartet. And if you look at graph B, that is what graph B shows. The signal that's the most downfield would be the quartet. And then this one would be graph A because we see the most downfield would be a singlet. So this is the structure of B, and this would be the structure for graph A. All right, let's go to the other board and let's finish up on how I would build one of these. Now, Let's use this as an example. If I ask you to name this, I hope you can all name it. This would be called ethyl acetate. And what I want to do is to make ethyl acetate using ethanol. Now, what I can do is to take ethanol and I'm going to oxidize it with potassium dichromate into acetic acid. And I'm going to make it into the ACL halide. Whenever you make an ester, it's best to use an ACL halide. It's more reactive and you get a better yield instead of just using the acid. So I've converted the alcohol to the acid to the acetyl halide, and I got acetyl chloride. I'm going to take the acetyl chloride, react it with ethanol, split off HCl, and I join them together to make my ethyl acetate. Now, um, if I ask you a final question, how many signals would you see in a carbon-13? 
Well, there's four different carbons, so you would get four different signals, and never forget, a carbonyl group comes in around the 180 ppm mark on a carbon-13 analysis. All right, I hope this helps and gave you a good idea of how to go about doing a really strong, solid problem in NMR spectroscopy. See you in study group. Bye-bye.